darlings, it's Zoe here, and today I'm presenting you another Darby story. I hope you like it just as much as I enjoyed writing it. But before we dive right into the story, I would like to remind you that I have a Patreon and a merch store, and I would greatly appreciate any support that you could give me be it a donation of a single dollar to my Patreon, or the purchase of any of my merchandise, I would appreciate it all the same. Lastly, I can completely understand if you cannot give me money directly. That is fine, understandable, as I said. But in that case, I would like to ask you to watch the video until the end. Like or dislike it, really doesn't matter which one of the two you do. Comment something below, and if you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon to join my beautiful darling doll army. This way, you can ensure that YouTube is doing its job and pays me the full amount. Anyways, just do that. So now, enjoy the show. Have I... have I talked about my quirk? Huh? Your boyfriend Darby gave you a dumbfounded look. You smiled. He will not understand. He cannot understand. Up until now, the two of you had spent an amazing night out. Thanks to civil unrest and Camino Ward, the police had been busy for days now, allowing you and the rest of the League to roam free, at least for now. As Shigaraki had put it, If we lay low enough for them to do their silly little riots, we will be forgotten until this blows over, so... No crimes, and enjoy being another civilian for the time being. Of course, Toga hated that. But her boyfriend kept her in check. Especially since this was such a special occasion. Tomura wasn't often the kind of leader to give such a mature order. And tonight was a strange one. Darby and you had been out on the town drinking, having fun. Because tonight was the night you would leave him. Hopefully not for long. You two had found yourself on top of one of the many skyscrapers. The skyline of the city creating a breathtaking, colorful neon background. You took a step back to give him a sweet smile. What are you talking about? He gruffed at you. It hurts, you know. He took a few steps forward to lean over the railing, deciding to let you tell him at your own pace. Suddenly, a single drop of water landed on his leather jacket. He looked up. It's gonna rain. Probably should head inside. <laughs> no, it shouldn't. You giggled. His gaze went over to you. You twirled around, seemingly trying to catch as much rain as possible. He walked closer to you. Smile on face. How about a dance? You giggled in reply as he took your hands. The rain picked up, creating a chaotic rhythm. Soon you found yourself pressed against his chest. You were in an almost dreamlike state. The colors of the city merging together as the rain fell onto your eyes. 
Why do you love me? He whispered into his scarred ear. He thought for a moment, his muscles remaining in a relaxed state while he was cartoonishly thinking out loud. However, he noticed you felt lighter than you were a moment ago. You are my pixie dream girl. Always your head in the clouds. I don't even know why you hang with us. He chuckled. With your attitude, you could be a hero, but you dine with the bad guys. <laughs> I love you, Darby. You mumbled loud enough for him to hear. The rain by now had soaked both of you completely. So what was this about your quirk earlier? His words made you drift into an abyss of emotions. You stared at an undefined spot behind him before you began. When I was a little girl, you took a deep breath. I died. I died when my quirk first manifested. I died without me knowing. He slowly let go of you while his face turned into a questioning grimace. <laughs> I know you wouldn't understand, silly. Just let me finish. You gently rubbed your hand against his cheek. My quirk killed me. But my quirk is what's keeping me alive. You've wrapped your body around him before continuing. I remember it only vaguely. But I think me and my parents went to the doctor because I couldn't feel pain. Dobby didn't know what to think. For the first time in his life, he was speechless. My heart didn't beat. My body was cold. So cold. You didn't know if the water in your eyes was from tears or the rain. You felt his arms tightening around you. And one day, one day, my body turned to ash. And that was when my quirk really activated. I was alive, yet I was not. My quirk is called the shape. It is a formless mass made up of my memories, feelings, and personality. He chuckled, but it sounded more like a choke. <laughs> so what does this have to do with us? You gave a somber giggle in response. My quirk is called the shape. In my other form, I can enter a person's body. Then my memories and personality overwrite the original person's self. Technically it isn't murder, but also it is. You see, decide. <sighs> My quirk sucks out the body it is in, mummifying it over time from the inside. I thought since this girl I'm currently inside of could survive longer.
Her quirk is called Nourish, allowing her to take nourishment from any source of food. This includes even inedible things. But alas, I can feel this body won't be long for this world. Tubby whimpered. But you will come back to me, right? A downside to all this. I guess. This is nature's way of killing me eventually. That eventually, the longer I'm without a body, the more memories I lose. You felt a sting inside your chest upon saying that. If I can't find a suitable body, I will vanish into nothingness. Darby shivered. He could not imagine the horror you must feel in this moment. So in a way I'm a villain for selfish reasons. I want to make many memories to increase the time I can look for a new body. A body I like. A sad chuckle left your lips. <laughs> I don't even remember if I was a boy or a girl. My real name, where I was born, not even who my parents were. You let out another chuckle. I only know that I prefer life as a girl, so I chose girls over boys. An intense pain made itself known to you. And soon you began losing the feelings in your limbs. I love you, Darby. But I feel this is it. No. Finally, you could muster the courage to look at him. It isn't your fault. It's my fault. You said. <laughs> that's... That's not fair. I... That must be something I can do. You ruffled through his hair. You would miss that. Until you would forget. There's no guarantee I will return. What if I forget you? What if you moved on when I find a body, but still remember you? What if I vanish into the cold embrace of death? His arms tightened more. It was starting to become hard to breathe. Maybe he was hoping if he just held on to you hard enough, you could stay. It's not your fault, Tabby, you repeated. You have been a gentleman to me. Kind. Compassionate. Compassion is something virgins tell guys they friend so. He grumbled. I love you. He said with more power in his voice. As if saying this would make you not destroy this vessel you are in. Suddenly, your body surged with pain. And you gasped. No, don't go. He pressed his head into your chest. Please. You whispered weakly. Don't let me go. He felt your hand rub over his back. One last time. I will wait for you. He cried into your crumbling chest. I will wait until the end of the world. Your mouth formed the words. 
it hurts. But there was no sound leaving your throat. It had already turned to dust. He remained like this, holding your clothes, only now allowing himself to truly cry. That was until he felt a presence behind him, and he turned to see a white mist that had formed next to him. It had a vague human shape, something that seemed like arms were outstretched. He put the clothes on the ground and stood up. After he raised his own arms, the shape came closer, embracing him. He felt something. He wasn't sure if it was a good feeling or a bad feeling. But he knew one thing. That right now, the thing in his arms was you. A weightless mist made up of nothing but memories. Tears rolled down his face as he realized this right here was him hugging you, the real you, for the first time, and then you were gone. With curving lips he walked up to the railing of the rooftop, desperately searching for something. And somewhere, he thought he could make out a somewhat human-shaped cloud floating in between cars. Four weeks passed. Tubby was lying on the sofa in the League's headquarters. His head clouded from alcohol. The stuff was slowly becoming less and less powerful. The empty bottles towered on the small coffee table next to him, shaking dangerously whenever someone moved too close to them. Toga sat on the floor next to Darby, chewing on her lower lip. Her boyfriend, whom the media called The Unbroken, was sitting at the bar drinking some drink or ogiri mixed up for him. Dabby's body suddenly shook up, and Toga looked at him. Is she back yet? No, Toga said with a straight face. I... I want her back, Toga. The young girl jumped on her feet and looked down on Dabby. And what do you want from me? Transform into her? With the speed of a snake, Dabby was on his knees, clutching Toga's shirt. I want her back, Toga. I want to live without her. He shook her. Tell me. Tell me she's coming back. Please, just... Just say baby, please. I... I need to hear it. Toga looked at her boyfriend, who was looking back at them. He simply nodded at her before turning to his alcohol. Careful. Gentle. She combed through his hair. Maybe, she said. There is hope she will come back. <laughs> you think? Yes, she said in a cheerful tone. His grasp weakened as he slumped back onto the sofa. Has he fallen asleep? asked Korogiri. Mm-hmm, 
was Toga's reply. The girl was just about to leave Dabi's side, when coming from the entrance, a sudden knock echoed through the room.